All right, so this is gonna be part two um, of that same, same facial planes. It just goes in the spaces. Something to know about the hyoid bone is that there's a lot of muscular attachment to it, so it helps stop the spread of that infection sinking down um, in the neck. Um, so just important to know. So we have we have two main types. We have primary, that'd be like tooth or um, like a main source, um, and then it goes into the space um, just adjacent to it. And then from that space, that, that adjacent space, the primary space, then it will travel to a secondary space. So I'm gonna go over the primary and the secondary, and then we'll talk about some other stuff. So for the maxillary spaces, um, we have maxillary and then we have mandibular or submaxillary, it's just another name. So maxillary, we have the canine, and obviously that'd be to the canine or premolars. Um, and it goes from the inferior ophthalmic vein. And when you go over the, the veins lecture, you know that this guy um, connects to the cavernous sinus. Um, the buckle would be the maxillary molars, and that buckle is also um, a mandibular space as well. We have the infratemporal. This one's very rare. It has third molars, um, and then this is from the tooth to the pterygoid plexus. That obviously can get bad because from the tooth to pterygoid plexus, um, the pterygoid plexus then connects to the cavernous sinus. Um, so that'd be an unfortunate way to die. Um, we have the mandibular, so it's going to be buccal, mandibular molars. Almost all of these kind of do your mandibular teeth. We have the submandibular, so it has molars, submandibular gland, the anterior digastric. We have the su submental. Um, so almost everything that we've learned, submental, is the infection from the anterior mandibular teeth, so it's just those lower front teeth. We have sublingual, so this is between the mucosa and the mylohyoid, so in that little area, um, and we in that one... The one photo that we've had to label so many times has cranial nerve 12, the lingual nerve, submandibular um, gland and ducts. We have the sublingual gland, and this would be infection from molars. So those are the primary spaces. So those molars carry that infection down into these, these primary spaces. From here, we have a secondary space. So we have the muscles of mastication really is really what these are. They just go into the kind of the more cheekish areas. Um, so we have the muscles of mastication. So it'd be the pterygomandibular, um, which is the inferior alveolar, and it has the artery, nerve, and vein. Submasteric, um, and then the, in, the, the temporal. And um, then we also have this lateral pharyngeal space, which just would be like lateral to the, pharynge, the pharynx, I would assume. Didn't really have any notes on it. I wouldn't expect to see it on the exam. Okay. So this one's probably the most important from this this lecture, I would guess. I, I'm gonna assume we're gonna have one question from spaces, from the primary and secondary, and then we're gonna have one or two from this guy. Um, so we have the retropharyngeal space. So remember when my last little lecture, um, we had that buccal pharyngeal, it's the back of the throat. Between that and the alar, which is this little loop, um, that's called the retropharyngeal space. Um, it's not the end of the world if infection gets in there, um, but it could go bad real bad. I mean, it could go bad really quickly. So laterally to that space is this carotid sheath. Obviously, we don't want that to get infected. Um, but if it goes posteriorly, then we're in this danger space. So why might that be? That why that why it, why it might be bad. So from the retropharyngeal aspect, um, like I said, if it goes lateral, it goes into the carotid. Um, and it has, we'll go over the contents inside the carotid. Um, and then if it goes posterior, it's a danger. Um, why it might be bad is because the clivus or the base of the skull goes all the way down to the T2. So it goes, it goes fairly deep into your, your thoracic. Um, the danger space is far worse. Um, it goes from the clivus all the way down to your diaphragm. So it goes way deep into your, into your gut. Um, so you dead. Um, and then if it goes into your carotid, these are the things that it might impact. Um, cranial nerve 10, your um, internal jugular vein, right? Because that, that, that drains almost everything in your face. And we have some cervical lymph. And then the ansa cervicalis is, is embedded in the wall of that carotid. So all these things can be impacted by this infection. So lastly, um, we have this the pathology section. So it's Ludwig's. Um, so this is like a severe cellulitis under the tongue. 
Um, and it says that it can be sublingual or submandibular. So it can be in this space or in this space. So that's just back from those spaces that I was talking about. It goes underneath the tongue and then it kind of can block the airway. Um, and it's new, normally due to bacteria. So we can just take, you know, moxicillin or something like that. Just some antibiotic to get rid of it. Um, we have a periapical abscess. That's just an abscess around the apex of the tooth. Um, and that can just um, shift into those, those spaces. And then we have cervical emphysema. And this is only clinical re relevant to us because um, it can be due to our hand pieces. We can shoot um, some gas from our hand pieces into these spaces and it can, can obstruct um, the airway. It can, it can travel down, that gas can travel down. Normally it just diffuses um, throughout your body. Um, so normally it's not that harmful, but it can be. So that's why it's on here. But that's this next one.